This podcast was brought to you by the Afro Parenting Village, empowering parents and building leaders of tomorrow. Hey guys, welcome back to this APB podcast and I am joined with by my beautiful guest one more time who was here initially to give us the six steps of intentional parenting. As promised, we said the next episode was going to be about delving into the first point, which was identify. Lady Andrea, you are welcome. Thank you very much. Aquaba. That's it. Hey, why are you? I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. You're trying, we're trying, we're trying. You're trying, you're trying. I'm coming to the pre classes. Come, so don't come. Worry. Yes, she's invited. <laughs> <laughs> So, girl, when you were here the last time, it was crazy because it just blew my mind, everything that you'd spoken about. And I know it probably took quite a while to be able to sit down and come up with these six steps. Mm. But as you were talking, even as myself, a parent, I could see how going through those six steps diligently would really help you evolve through your parenting. Mm. I want to find out now how you came up with that first step, identify. And I had a question to ask you as well, but just go over how you came up with that step and then we can go on to that. My whole thing is um, there's so much knowledge and information out there. Right. Right. There's so much knowledge and information out there and it's just not accessible to people. Yeah. And that's something that really bothered me when I got into academia is the information that's there is information that can help our communities. It can help you in a day to day Mm. kind of like life in any any department, right. right? Now we are bombarded with so much information in this information age, but what you actually need is very difficult to actually navigate it and to mm-hmm. identify and to find it. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I don't think it's fair that this knowledge and information is there, mm-hmm. but unless you're in academia mm-hmm. or you unless you know where to go specifically looking for it, you mm-hmm. can't even find it. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So th- for me, it was just about bringing this knowledge and these very kind of, basic things that you could be doing right. that when, when, when I explain it to people, they're like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, right? It. But yeah. it's something that has never really been taught to yeah. us. Yeah. So for me, I wanted to bridge that gap mm-hmm. in knowledge, which is why I even started the whole research centre, which mm-hmm. is about bridging that, that gap right. with there are solutions to every problem that we have. Mm-hmm. And I said before in the previous episode, we don't have those solutions because people don't want us to have those solutions. Right, right. There's no other way around it. Right. So... With somebody who has gone to that side of the fence mm-hmm. and come, like, I'm still in my community. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm going to bring that knowledge. Yeah. And I'm going to bring it yeah. to my people because yeah. we need it. Yeah. And, you know, our whole mental, emotional, spiritual liberation mm-hmm. comes from being informed. Mm-hmm. So now, you know, you can spend hours on TikTok or whatever and not even get anything out of it. But mm-hmm. if you know what to type in, mm-hmm. You can get so much mm-hmm. information. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So for me, it was about bridging that gap, bridging that knowledge gap, and trying to make this information that's actually really easily digestible. There is, of course, more complicated stuff. I'm going to start talking about how neuropathways are formed and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But you don't even need to know all of that. Right. All you need to know is give a child eye contact for 15 minutes a day, right. and your child won't be a sociopath. Right, right, right. right, right. That's actually all it takes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's that need and affection and the want. Yeah. I'm going to peel it back a little bit more even. So when you talk about a lot of parents not even knowing where to find it and how we've been conditioned, there's something that you touched upon where you said, as people, we have a need that is... It's almost holistic. Mm. So you have like an emotional, a mental need, a spiritual need. Mm -hmm. And whether we like it or not, we live in a a society or an environment where it has a mantra Mm -hmm. that isn't necessarily spelled out, Mm -hmm. like how you talk about intentional parenting. Mm -hmm. So people want to become parents for any given reason, Mm -hmm. but haven't really considered why. Mm -hmm. Some people would say it happens to them. Mm -hmm. Some people would say... They were expected to tick a box when mm-hmm. they got to a certain age. Mm-hmm. Some people would say it was expected of them because of their society. Mm-hmm. What would you say to people before they become parents? Because I think that is a really important place to even consider or to start. What are the things that people should be considering from age dot, from the time you say, oh, when I grow up, I want children. Like, you know, as you evolve, mm. what are some of the things that you should be thinking about? Number one is why. Okay. Why do you want to be a parent? Right. Right. Because... Like you said, people want to be parents for lots of different reasons. Mm. I see all the time people saying, you know, if you don't have kids, who's going to look after you when you're old? Mm-hmm. Um, nursing homes mm-hmm. is a whole thriving business model because nobody's looking after you when you are old. That's so true. Right? In an increasingly globalised world, 
most people are not living, we're not living in compounds mm -hmm. with generations and generations like that anymore. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have a child because you feel like a child will take care of you when they are older, mm -hmm. that's not a viable reason to have a child mm -hmm. too. Even if that is your reason for having a child, if you do not nurture a relationship with your child, mm -hmm. they are in a rush to get away from you mm -hmm. as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Okay. So whatever... You know, I always say to people, as adults, mm -hmm. our internal voice is the voice of our parents, yeah. right? For better or for worse. Yeah. So if, you're, if your internal voice is full of doubt mm -hmm. and full of um, negative thoughts, mm -hmm. it means that your parents are probably very negative towards you. Yeah. Anytime you made a mistake, they would highlight the mistake and highlight the mistake and highlight the mistake. And it makes you not even want to try and do anything. Mm -hmm. So what, what is your reason why? And two, are you ready? Mm. Are you emotionally ready to have a child? Mm -hmm. And do you have the support system that you need to have a child? Because right. it takes a village. It does. Right. And there's absolutely so many different things that can come up when you have a child that if you don't have that support system in place, you know, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we live in a world now where you can hire your support system. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not going to say you should or you shouldn't do that. There's pros and cons to both, right? So from, like, I believe that grandparents are always going to be grandparents and do their grandparently duties. Um, if you want your child raised in a specific way and you want to have a fire higher nanny to do that, it might be easier to do that because your grandparents aren't now going to adopt your new, your new age parenting tactics. Let them be the grandparents that spoil the children. Don't, don't have children with the intention that, hey, my grandparents, my parents are going to be the ones that are going to raise them. So you have to be ready and you have to be doing it for the right reasons. Right, no, I really love that. So just be considered, be informed, well-researched, so you know exactly what you're going exactly. into. Exactly. Okay, so you know that for yourself. And also the context that you're living in, to right. have realistic expectations for yeah. the context that you're living in. Right. Right, and the needs of the needs of your child, the needs of yourself. Mm -hmm. It's a holistic thing, like you said, you have to mm -hmm. make, you're able to meet your child's physical needs, yeah. emotional needs, spiritual needs, social needs, intellectual needs. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're able to meet all of their needs. And there's right. a lot of responsibility. It's not it something is. to take lightly. <laughs> At all. And then, of course, even on yourself, your, your parents' voice being your inner voice, there might be certain things that you need to work on mm -hmm. that you had faced as a child. Exactly. So there's all of that. Right. So in terms of then, you've identified all of these things mm -hmm. and you're going into parenting. With the things that you have just spoken about um, a minute ago, how does that look like when you put it into action? Okay, so the first step of the framework is identify. Mm -hmm. It's about identifying your parenting philosophy. Right. So, um, that, like, in the program, there's some prompts, some questions that I ask. Okay. Um, and it actually begins with you reflecting on your own childhood. What right. was your childhood like? How right. would you describe your childhood? Right. Right. And you have to rely on your memory. Mm -hmm. You have those memories for a reason, mm -hmm. right? So some of us have blocked out memories. Mm -hmm. Some of us have very, very vivid memories. Mm -hmm. Some of us have no memories, mm -hmm. right? And it's a little bit of an investigation into why that happens. And you know, everything happens in cycles. The brain is a very amazing thing. Mm -hmm. And memories can come and just slap you any time without you even realizing. Unawaringly, yeah. Right? Any point in your time, you could be driving along in some random memory, hey, it's come. Where did this come from? Yeah. Right? Or sometimes this, you can even react to a situation and ask yourself, why did I react that way? Not knowing you're still being haunted by whatever. Exactly. Yeah. So identifying your parenting philosophy is ultimately about what type of parent do you want to be? Right. One of the questions I ask is, imagine your child is doing like a, like a very significant event, mm -hmm. okay? People normally say weddings, but I don't want to focus on weddings. It can be a wedding. It can be the launch of their their the, the multi-billion pound company. It can right. be anything, yeah. right? And in their speech, what do you want them to say about you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. What do you want them to say about you as a parent? Mm -hmm. right? And how you help them to achieve whatever it is that they wanted to achieve, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So what type of person are you trying to raise? Mm -hmm. right? How do you want your children to speak of you? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you want your child to feel about their position in the world? Mm -hmm. Right, and these are very, very big questions. They are, but I think they're questions that need to be asked. Exactly. And, yeah, and the thing, hmm, I can see how we're so aligned because one of the questions that we ask people that's very similar is how do you want to be remembered? Yes. And every time that question is asked, they almost take a deep breath, sit back, 
and they're like, this is what this is all about. Mm. Yeah, the, yeah. What, what you do leaves a mark. It's, it's yeah. 100%. Yeah. Because, you know, we're Africans, right? Yeah. So you have a duty. Hey. Right? You have a duty to take care of your parents. Yeah. But you can take care of your parents in lots of ways. You can yeah. pay somebody to look after your parents here. Yeah. You can say, I'm going to bring my parents here. Yeah. You can involve your parent. And all of those things is a result of how you interacted with your child yeah. as they were growing up. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and whether or not you were there for them in those key moments, and those key moments, you know, includes things like their football games or mm. drum performances, mm. but it's also things like when they were Emotionally, doubting themselves, absolutely. right, when they were having conflicts with their friends, or when they were having conflicts even with their boyfriend or their girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Were you there? Yeah. Did they feel like they can come to you and say, "Mom, Dad, help me figure this out"? Yeah. Right. Are you a parent who has always given a space, given space to your child? to figure out their thoughts and to sit with their feelings? Or have you always been a parent who you expect your child to always be regulated? You can't even regulate your own emotions. Absolutely. You can't, like, as adults, we, we can't regulate our emotions. Yeah. When you're a little bit tired, you're moaning at your partner for every little thing. Yeah. yeah. Right? But you expect your child to be regulated all the time. Mm -hmm. So how it's that, you as a parent, how do you want your child to relate to you? Mm -hmm. And then what are you going to do about that? Right. And it, it's a very deep question, Yeah. right? So in that process, identifying that as a couple, mm -hmm. right? And there, there are places where you would agree mm -hmm. and there are places where you might not agree. Mm -hmm. So what I tend to do when I'm doing it with two parents is I mm -hmm. ask them to write it on separate lists. Right. Right, so we also, I also say to them, like, okay, if I said to you, um, clear your mind, mm -hmm. okay, what's the first word that comes to your mind when you, when you hear the word child? Infant. Okay, what mm. else? Love, vulnerable, mm -hmm. innocence. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So vulnerability and innocence is one of those things that come up a lot, mm -hmm. right? So if you believe a child is vulnerable and innocent, or let's go over the word innocent. Mm -hmm. If you believe a child is innocent, mm -hmm. when do they stop being innocent? I don't think they do. Only because I think every day is a learning, a school day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if your child then makes a mistake, mm -hmm. are you treating them as if they're an innocent person making a mistake? Mm -hmm. Or are you treating them as if they're doing it maliciously? How are you addressing mm. that situation? Okay, so as a parent, I'm going to answer that. I think it's both. Because there is room for seeing and understanding and assimilating the innocence in a child. Mm -hmm. And then there is a place where the child has gotten to a stage where you can communicate and make an agreement about mm -hmm. what's expected of them and what's expected of you. Mm -hmm. So with us, if our children do something wrong and they accept that they've done something wrong, mm -hmm. we then have to discuss that. And then they have to apologize with an explanation as to how that's not going to continue mm -hmm. again. So that's almost teaching accountability. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, so it's a fine, it's a very fine line. Exactly. Okay. So if your two-year-old does something, your two-year-old comes in, there's the, there's the, I saw this video today, mm -hmm. actually, where I think they were doing like a get ready with me or like a video of them recording their house and the toddler came in and sprinkled flour all over the living room and the parent got upset with the toddler. And I'm like, it's your own fault. Yeah. Why is a flower within reach of a two-year-old? Right. right. Right? But you are annoyed mm -hmm. that this mess has been made, yeah. but you were shouting at the two-year-old. Yeah. But who are you annoyed at? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Who are you annoyed at? Are you annoyed at yourself? Yeah. Are you annoyed at the mess? Yeah. Are you annoyed at the two-year-old? <laughs> it's all of it. Do you understand? And the child has now become the punching bag. Do you understand? Yeah. Because the child say, do you know what? I see this bag of flour. Yeah. I see my hard-working father is hoovering this place. I'm going to pick up the flour yeah. and sprinkle it everywhere yeah. just to upset him. You know what? See, sometimes it's simply curiosity. I just want to see what happens when Do you I, understand? Yeah. And the reality is that's how children learn. Yeah. Do you understand that? Yeah. That is literally how children learn. Yeah. They want to know what happens if. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So actually, rather than shouting at the child, yeah. especially a two-year-old, because yeah. once you start shouting, all you're doing is startling them. Yeah. Right? You're putting yeah. them on timeout, you're telling yeah. them off. This is all about you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand? This yeah. is all about you. Yeah. They are a two-year-old. Yeah. Right? They, they don't even have the the coordination to even, even put their hand in and sprinkle it small, small. Yeah. They just yeah. held the thing, they're running around, they're sprinkled they're everywhere. Is. They are even surprised. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. So it's really about you understanding what's going on with that child. So mm. th that, that kind of leads into the third step, the theorized step, which is where you have more of a realistic expectation mm. of the child and what they're doing. But as you're saying, when a child is doing something, 
you were stepping back in terms of, okay, if your child has spoken back about something, right? I mean, we all have those moments, right? Where a child is cheeking, you're like, mm, you're getting a bit bright, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> where's all this attitude coming from? Yeah. But you're saying that you want your child to be outspoken. Mm -hmm. You want your child to speak out against injustice. Mm -hmm. So if they feel like something is unjust, mm -hmm. again, they don't have the self-regulation skills, so they might not have addressed it in the right way. Right. But then what behavior are you addressing? Mm -hmm. Are you addressing the way that they have spoken to you? Or are you addressing that that they have spoken to you? Mm -hmm. And it's a very thin line. Mm -hmm. And it requires you to actually take a step back mm -hmm and do that assessment within yourself. So there's this um, thing called reflection in action and reflection on action. Mm -hmm. Reflection in action is when you reflect whilst you're doing something mm -hmm. and reflecting on action is when you reflect on something that you have already done. Mm -hmm. And the reality is you can't reflect in action until you have mastered reflection on action, mm -hmm. right? So, and this is where self-regulation comes in. Mm -hmm. So children can't think about what they're doing whilst they're doing it, mm -hmm. Until, like, really and truly, we don't even know that's going until we're, like, 24. Mm, I've heard it's 25, yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. So expecting a child to explain to you there and then why they have done this thing, mm. their brain, all the brain is telling them is, your mum's mad at you, 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 your mum's mad, mad, mad at you. So what happens is they're always trying to get closer to you. Mm. Like, just give me a hug, just give me a hug. Mm. And you're like, no, mm. I'm telling you off. Da -da 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 -da. And all their feeling is... My mum is mad at me, my mum is mad. They're not even listening to what you're saying. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And we're pissed. So we're like, no, we're yeah. going to have this conversation now. Yeah. You are not even regulated. Yeah. So how can you regulate your child? Them. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Sure. So in that space and time, a child, I'm asking you a question, but it's also from experience. So in regulating your emotions in action and on action, you would also have to train the child to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So when a situation arises, in order to be able to, to have the child communicate what's, what they're going through, assimilate why they did what they did, etc., mm -hmm. you would have to have that conversation. So at some point, even if, like with me personally, if my child wants a hug, mm -hmm. when they have overstepped a boundary mm -hmm. or overstepped something that they shouldn't have done, mm -hmm. I don't think I would, ex I wouldn't give the hug the mm -hmm. same way I wouldn't want them to hug me mm -hmm. if they wanted an explanation mm -hmm. from me. Uh -huh. So in that time, what sort of words should be used um, between the parent and the child mm -hmm. to let the child know that either you overstepped a boundary or for the child to let the parent know that you've overstepped a uh -huh. Excellent question. Yeah. And it isn't to say that you should, you should compromise your boundaries. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's a very yeah. important thing. Yeah. Because we have to teach children how to respect their own boundaries. Right. And, you know, we can, you can teach a child something a hundred times, mm -hmm. but they will learn what you do, yep. not what you tell what them. You yeah. Do you understand? So yeah. if you are able to say, hold on, mm -hmm. right? And just calm down for a second. Mm -hmm. Let's have this conversation first, mm -hmm. right? Whatever. You can, you can reassure them, yeah. like, I still love you, whatever, yeah. but, but we're not doing that now. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Rather than kind of reprimanding them. Yeah. Because what's going on in their brain, mm -hmm. what's going on in their body, their nervous system is dysregulated. Mm -hmm. So trying to get them to calm their nervous system mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. And you also have to calm your nervous system because mm -hmm. they are attuned to you. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So they are picking off, they are picking up off of your, your dysregulation yeah. and it's dysregulating them. So you right. can say to them, I need a minute. Right. And it makes it okay for them to say, I need a minute. Right. right. Does that make sense? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yes, again, the foresight that I always see, especially in like regulating your emotions and problem solving and uh, what's the word? Conflicts, resolutions, mm -hmm, and things mm -hmm. like that. It formulates their the way that they resolve conflicts in For the their rest relationship. of their lives, uh -huh. exactly. So what they accept or what you teach them to accept is what they will accept. What you teach them to defend is what they'll defend. And I think sometimes as parents, we don't always have that mm -hmm. foresight. So in as much as you don't want your child um, taking advantage of anybody else, you don't want your child to be taking advantage yes, of... Yes, and you can't be the one taking advantage of your child. This is it. Because it makes it OK right. for other people to do, to do that. So, yeah. so it's even basic things like like your uncle, your auntie, somebody's come to the house. Mm -hmm. And I always ask you then, can I give you a hug? Yep. Right? It's never yep. going to be, I'm your auntie, so you have to hug me. Yeah. No, if you don't want to give me a hug, you don't yep. have to give me a hug. Yeah. Right? And nobody can come and tell me, oh, your child is rude because they don't want to hug me. I'll tell yep. you to leave my house. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you understand? Because yeah. 
How are you meant to teach a child consent if yeah. they can't consent with to their own they... body in the safety of you being there? Right, right. And I think the same way, like you say, they should also, if somebody says, actually, I don't want to do this, you should be able to accept that I don't want to do that because there's a lot of, oh, he needs this or he needs yes. this. Yes, and it's okay. Yeah. Do you understand? You can yeah. say to them, after we have done this, yeah. because, you know, they say realistically, yeah, you only really have to get it right 30% of the time. Right. Like, you're going right. to have bad days. You're going to have days where you're going to flip out and shout and whatever. Yeah. And then even with that, you can say to them, look, I'm having a bad day. And yeah. it makes it okay for yeah. them to have bad days. This is it. They can also... Do you understand? Yeah. We, all kind of, we all have this anxiety as adults and depression because we were never allowed to have bad days. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do you understand? Yeah. And so when you have a bad day, you feel like you have failed as a human being. Yeah, yeah. And then you just pass that on to your child. You're just projecting. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> girls and boys, that was a really deep conversation, but one that was needed to be had. So what I personally got from that was balance, being able to regulate your emotions, mm -hmm. being able to have these conversations with your children and just taking a minute to say that, you know, I need to take a minute and for them to be able to understand the pros and the cons, either side, the balance of how to have a discussion, how to have a conflict, how mm -hmm. to have, yeah, just resolve issues so you can come back to where you were. Um, and that's the core. So always get that child to centerize mm. and yeah, focus on the core. Andrew, I can't thank you enough for this. I'm saying this, but I'm sure you guys are, you're going away with so much more. <laughs> if you can, let us know exactly what you went away with. Like she said, it takes a village to raise a child. We're doing this together. There is going to be ups and downs, but we're here to support. Andrea, thank you so much. No problem. Yes, and we will see you in the next one. We do our traditional two taps on the shoulder. Finga wevu. And we say, hey, chill. This podcast was brought to you by the Afro Parenting Village, empowering parents and building leaders of tomorrow.